Hello, 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 hello. Ray Reese, Reese's Masterpieces, um, out here in Crumlin. Excuse me, just getting done. Just getting done teaching uh, cardio kickboxing. Um, yeah, taught two cardio kickboxing classes. Um, those are kind of back to back. Well, there's a 30 minute break in between for which I am hugely uh, grateful. Uh, but I also taught a boot camp total body conditioning class earlier, which was sub, it was a sub. Um, so I'm a bit zonked, a bit lower energy. Um, because I also got into the gym last night um, and did chest and I was way more sore than, I must, I think I'm, I'm off on my, my schedule and might have been working, I might have worked this body part less than four days ago or four days ago. Um, but yeah, teaching three classes in a day will wear you out. Well, it wears me out. It might not wear out, you know, Vivian or somebody, but it wears me out. And that's because I, you know, I try to, I try to be high energy. I try to put my all into, into it. I try to leave everything on the floor, so to speak, which, which brings me, which brings me to my point. Um, I've used this phrase in a, in a couple of, a lot of videos, a lot of videos, uh, talking about um, getting in shape versus just working out. You know, and, and what is, what does that mean? People tend to equate them and they're, they're not the same thing. You work out, you know, um, you work out to get in shape, right? You, so you work out in order to get in shape. The workout, the workout is simply the tasks that you do to achieve um, this result. And, but even that result can be you know, a continual process, right? Um, but if you, so, so what's the physical difference? What's, what's another, um, if when you leave, when you're done, when you leave the gym or you stop, you stop your activities, if when you leave the gym and then you come back the next time, if the next time you come back, you aren't, you haven't improved or increased, you know, if, let's just say, you know, for, for months and you're, you haven't improved or increased and you're just working out, you're not getting in shape. Um, you're just doing the same stuff over and over and over again. And that's not where you want to be, I don't think. Most people who work out are trying to get in shape. But what happens is, um, to, to quote Ronnie Coleman, um, however many times uh, Mr. Olympia, he's like, everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, but nobody wants to lift no heavy ass weights. Um, you know? That's the thing with fitness. Like everybody, everybody wants to, everybody wants to be in shape, but people generally either don't want to or don't understand. You know, they don't, either don't want to do or they don't understand the amount of work that they have to do in order to affect change. But that's it. If you're not affecting change, you're you're just working out, you're not getting in shape. Um, now, does that mean you should just give up and go home? No, no. Um, it, there are people, 
for whom working out is a chore. It is boring. It is just, ugh, right? That's the, that, and that's how it is with everybody. We all have that thing. Like some people love working on math, love working with numbers. Other people love working with, you know, colors and paints. Other people like working with, you know, music. We're all gonna have the things that we are predisposed to, to doing and in and actually in the gym setting, there is different activities and different apparatus and different classes that um, we may gravitate towards, gravitate towards. But let's say, you know what? None of it, none of it is your thing. And you know, you're just gonna go and you know, put forth just a little bit of effort. You know, you're doing weights, but you're not really, um, not really pushing yourself. Should you uh, give up and go home? If you're not going to increase, no. No, you shouldn't. Um, because if you if you have a if you establish a pattern of behavior that isn't detrimental, then there has to be a net positive. Unless you're super like right in the middle, which most people aren't. Like so if you're going out and you're going to the gym, you spend an hour at the gym, you know, maybe that's an hour that you're not at the bar. Maybe that's, uh, you know, an hour that you're not just chilling, watching Netflix and eating ice cream, whatever it might be. And also, if, if you establish this pattern that you keep doing and it becomes part of your lifestyle, even if you don't, um, improve significantly if you're able to maintain throughout the years then there is that long-term benefit so um if you guys remember uh well i did a video so i did a video with my grandma uh we're talking about her fitness level but we were sitting at the table and but she's very mobile she's very independent She's not like, you know, she's not jacked, but she's 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 in good, she's in great shape. She has great range of motion. She has great um, stability. Uh, and she's she has some pep in her step. She had, she doesn't use a walker, she doesn't lean against anything, no cane, nothing. And that comes from just consistent decade after decade after decade. So she doesn't work out, she stretches, she doesn't necessarily work out and sweating and you know uh whatever having to wipe down machines and rip it off the tank no, you know she's not that's not her right and it's never been her i mean she used to play she used to, she was very very active as a youth but she's kept being active as she could throughout the years so you know um it's it's not to it's not to tell you to you know Stop working out. What I will say, what I will say, um, and so, yeah, I will say, as a member, as somebody who, as somebody who is there to work out and get it in and 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 lift some heavy ass weights, um, be mindful of your surroundings. You know, if you're not. If you're not there at the gym to uh, do what's necessary to get discernible results in a reasonable amount of time, just be mindful. Be mindful of, you know, where you are on the floor and, you know, like, are you, are you using the elliptical? Are you going like, one mile an hour on the elliptical while you know checking your facebook on a monday night at 5 45 and there's like three to five people waiting uh for the treadmill you know are you are you in the power rack or the squat rack with a bar that you got from the group fitness room and are doing like 
quarter squats. You know, and there's just people buzzing around and weights clanking and, you know, just be mindful, be courteous. Um, but still, you know, keep going. And you never know, you never know. If you keep going, uh, you may find things that you like. Now, now, ha 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 ha. As an instructor, I will say just, just being open and honest, and I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just giving you my, my personal opinion as a fitness professional. Um, if you're coming to a class, if you're coming to my class, and so I don't want to speak for any other instructor, if you're coming to my class and you're just giving like 10 to 30% effort, you know, you're not taking any of the coaching or advice and you're just going through the motions, that, that to me is, is, it's unpleasant. It is unpleasant. It's unpleasant at best and um, at worst, it is, it's disrespectful. It's like with any other class. If you have a, a teacher or a professor who's trying to get you to learn something, who's trying to get you to acquire a skill, and you're just, you know, not gonna do what's asked of you, then, you know, you're, you're wasting time, wasting my time and yours. In that instance, I would suggest going out on the floor and you know doing your own workout and the other thing is again especially if classes is packed you know depending on your gym like a monday tuesday night saturday morning you know there might be 20 to 30 people in a class and if you've got like five to ten people who are just there because they have a membership and their girlfriend has a membership or their job pays for it and you know their their boyfriend um he you know he works out told her she should you know maybe start working out because you know she's a little fluffy I'll, I'll say work out work out because you want to work out because you want to get these results and you're willing to do what it takes um, but yeah, as an instructor, that like, that's just, and also specific to me in my classes, I adjust my curriculum based on the number of people. So case, case in point, if I have 20 people in class, we're going to be fairly stationary. We're not going to do a bunch of travel, not a bunch of lateral movements or you know, forwards and backwards, we're gonna be eh, roughly in the same place. If I have five to 10 people, we're moving around. We're gonna, we're gonna use the space, right? Um, if I have four people, you know, wh however many people there are, but if I've got, and so like this, what'll happen, there's times where I sub a class, right? And I'll have like 20 people, not, well, 20 people who regularly come to the, you know, regular teacher's class, you know, maybe they show up like, oh, okay, there's a sub. But then you have people that are just unenthused that there's a sub and you have people that are unenthused about whatever it is, because I don't, I don't take the class with you. I don't know what you guys do in the class. I don't know the curriculum, but I know the format. Um, I know, I know the body. You know, um, and then what'll happen is you'll have 20 people there, but maybe only 10 to 15 people that are putting forth um, a reasonable amount of effort. So in that instance, like, you know, not, there'll, be, there'll be folks who stick around for like half the class and then leave. And I'm like, you know, that, hey, that's it's your it's it's your it's your workout. 
leave if you like. Um, and that's right. If you, and I'm all, I'm, I am of that mindset. If you go to a class and you don't like that class for whatever reason, you know, leave. That's cool. You know, and then go on an elliptical. That's fine. That's your right. That's your privilege. I would, I would rather somebody stick around for 10 to 15 minutes, realize that this isn't for them, and then leave and go work out on the gym floor than to stick around for 45 to 60 minutes and not, not put forth any effort. Um, and the other thing, like as, as an instructor, um, <coughs> excuse me, I, I had some trail, trail mix and there's like peanut shrapnel all in my face place. Um, so, uh, what I was saying is also, as an instructor, if I have 20 people in class and there's a discernible amount of people, or it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how, however many people there are in class, if there's a, if there's a, if, if there's a significant percentage of people who are doing things either incorrectly or, um, you know, doing things incorrectly or, or without the effort needed to justify that exercise, that's going to draw my attention. And that's not fair to the other, um, to the other students, other members, you know, if, and cause I'm going to, I'm going to have to turn you cause again, I, so I shouldn't say again, but I'm a very, I'm a very hands-on and involved, not literally hands-on, but I'm a very, um, I engage with the members, right? I'm looking at what you're doing and I'm gonna give out, I'm gonna give out notes that are general to the group. I'm also gonna give out notes that are specific to people. Whether I call out your name, I might say, hey, you know, you know, Make certain that if you know you're you've got you're doing this movement that you do it like this, and I might repeat it until that person um, gets the hint. Because I try not to put people on the spot, but you know, and then then what will happen is if people don't, if that person still doesn't get it, then I'll walk over and hey, get your shoulders back, keep your back straight, uh, hips back, bend your legs, right? But if let's say, let's say you got 10 to 20 people and it's just like one person that's just not, what? I will, I will tune them out, that's just what it is. Because if I talk to them and they just still don't like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just tune them out. It's still distracting though. It's still distracting and it feels disrespectful because it's like, look, you're not doing, you know, it's like if, uh, you know, if I'm trying to teach calculus which I wouldn't <laughs> if I'm trying to teach algebra and you know you're just in your book doing arithmetic that's not nobody that's not awesome right um, but at the end of the day no matter what whether it's me but it's any other instructor or a trainer or a doctor or what have you, um, or teach, you know, teacher, whatever, any sort of person from whom you're receiving instructions. If, or even without, without a, a, a professional, you have to be willing to do the work to get the result that you're trying to do. And no matter what, if you're here and you're trying to get here, there is a specific amount of non-negotiable work that has to be done. You know, if you're trying to, if you're trying to, and the, the, the sooner you're trying to accomplish it, the more work you gotta do, right? And I mean, it's just non-negotiable. You, you, you gotta put, you gotta put the work in. Otherwise you're just, you're spinning your wheels. You're just working out, but you're not getting in shape. Uh, the other, the other thing is, 
I should say that depending on your workout, like if you go to the gym and you just, let's say you're on the elliptical and you go, you're on the elliptical for 30 minutes at, I don't know, that's not, that's not a good, no, let's say you're on a treadmill, treadmill. Let's say you're on the treadmill and you're going three miles, you're going three miles an hour. Yeah, you're going, let's say you're going to three miles an hour or less, whatever. If you're on the, you're on the treadmill and you're going a consistent speed day in and day out, you are never going any faster, you're not adding an incline, you're not, you know, adding any dumbbells and you're not, you're not doing anything other than that exact same speed for the exact same length with the exact same, you know, uh, settings and you plateau, eventually you plateau. There is the benefit that, you know, if it is of a, a certain pace that you will at least, you at least um, get your get your heart going a little bit. It'll still it's still beneficial to your heart. So even walking, you know. So you can, if you if if you never went to the gym and you just got out, got up, and walked to the store, walked back, and you know you walked around the block a few times. Even if you walked for thirty minutes, that's still beneficial, right? It, it's beneficial as far as you know your limbs and stuff moving and being able to get up and be mobile and independent, you know, there's that benefit. Helps you to retain that functionality, at least within those movements. Um, so there, there is that, there are some heart benefits. Um, oh, there's another thing. Um, you gotta be willing to do the work to, to get the stuff. Um, something. Now you only do the work to get the results and hmm. I have to think about this. Oop. Okay, all right, yes. So the the other thing that I was gonna say with regards to like the final thing, the yeah, other thing I was gonna say was that the Oh man, I just, excuse me. The, with regards to working out versus getting in shape was that, oh, oh yeah, okay, yes, yes. The, the other thing which I should have brought up in the beginning but I sort of got to anyway, is that another difference between working out and getting in shape is that if you work out, so, you, you can get some benefits. You can get some benefits from working out without necessarily improving, um, without necessarily getting in shape. Because the, the difference, working out, your results just stay there. Like if you go to a cardio class and you don't push and you just do the bare minimum, then you will have burned some, you'll have burned some calories. So there is that. You can burn some calories. That is, you know, that's not getting in shape, but that is burning calories, right? Burning calories, maybe get your heart rate up a little bit. Um, you can burn calories, but poof, that's, that's it. Once, once you leave the class, no more benefits. No more, you're not gonna, it doesn't, translate or transfer to anything else. Whereas getting in shape means that, you know, you are, you are increasing your total body, like capacity, your fitness level, you know, your heart will be discernibly stronger, your respiratory endurance will be stronger, something, your muscles will be bigger or more endurance and more explosive, whatever, that will raise your, um, your resting metabolic rate, you'll burn more calories 24 seven as opposed to just in the gym. 
So in theory, let's say hypothetically speaking, you know what, you noticed that you were, you take in an extra 300 calories per day because, I don't know, you started going out afterwards. You go, started going out with friends or whatever. And so you then um, decide, oh, okay, I'm gonna go to a gym, take a cardio class, and maybe you, you burn 300 calories off. Okay, all right, and that, eh, that's fine. You know, if that's, if that's your goal, to say, hey, I just wanna burn, all right. And that's not an exact science, and that's not the best thing. Like, you, because also, if you're taking in, if you're taking in things that are unhealthy, take, so you're taking in things that are, you're taking in things that are unhealthy and you try to like just burn them off, the things that are unhealthy are still unhealthy. You are only burning off, you're burning off like the, you know, you're burning off like the excess fat to a degree, but like let's say something's high in cholesterol or something is, I, you know, let, put it like this. Let's say you're, if you're drinking vodka or something, you're like going to town with like alcohol. You can go to the gym and work off those, you can work off those calories, but you're not necessarily working off any damage that it's doing to your systems, doing to your, you know, your liver or what have you. So we don't want to, we don't want to endorse that mindset of, hey, I can do a bunch of bad stuff over here, and then so long as I go to the gym, hey, I, it evens out. Eh, no, nope. Because I can, I, with my sugar addiction, I could, I could go to the gym to work off the calories that I got from drinking an F ton of juice, but that doesn't make me less diabetic or pre-diabetic. I have to take in less sugar and I have to weigh less, okay? So I can't afford to be, you know, there, I, I've gotta, I've gotta work out more. Get, I've, gotta, I've gotta get in better shape and I've gotta <laughs> get that sugar down, right? And that's, that's the goal, that's, and I, so that's my goal is to not be diabetic. So there's a certain amount of work, there's a certain amount of things that I gotta do in order to achieve that result. So, all right, um, that's about it. Uh, I swear to you, I'm going to get to the video announcing, actually, yeah, I will get to the video announcing the, the winners. I have to, to double check some stuff, but um, I'm gonna, probably gonna do that tonight or next or, or whatever. So. Take care, I hope you're all doing well. Um, thanks to everybody, we're get, getting a little, getting more subscribers without me even asking, getting a lot more views, you know. Most, most are regularly in like double digits now. Hey, day by day, step by step. But thankful to all of you. Um, Ray Reese, Reese's Masterpieces, take care. See you. bye-bye.